Hi guys, gals, and non-binary pals. It is Shimmy Shay here today, back with another very special guest who you guys have seen before. It's widely requested as well, Enzo Antonio. Hi everyone. Welcome back. It's an honor to be on your channel again. It's an honor to have you again. People have been talking about us, Enzo. They've got assumptions that I want to react to. We also did a video on Enzo's channel just asking each other deep, juicy questions that you guys will definitely want to hear. We may or may not have canceled ourselves like eight times in that video, so definitely check it out. It was just me that canceled myself, but like, <laughs> yeah, go watch it. But today, I asked you guys on my Instagram story a few days ago in a very low-key way to make assumptions about Enzo and I. That was for this video. Surprise! <laughs> and we were like trying to make it low-key and we're like, we're just FaceTiming, when in reality we were like talking about the collab and they showed me like a mini sneak peek of the assumptions and I'm terrified. <laughs> You both say material girl all the time. I feel like, I can't remember the last time I've ever used that word to be honest. I always say it cause it's, it's a TikTok sound which they probably just assume that you still have TikTok but the TikTok sound goes like material girl. It's really addicting to say, I say it all the time. Okay, I feel like, I feel like I have heard that for a second. I was thinking about the Ma Madonna song. So, I, I literally sound like an old, like, grandma, just, like, very behind. Like, anyway. so, I thought you were talking about Madonna. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were talking about Madonna. Anyways, <laughs> a lot of material girls in my vocabulary. Next assumption is mentally ill. Rude. Ouch. <laughs> True, yeah, but, like, was... you didn't have to say it. <laughs> you don't have to repeat it. Would probably adopt introverts. Sure, why not? Yeah, <laughs> I am an introvert, so I will take in any other introvert. Agreed. Bored of YouTube. <laughs> Oh, this is a question in our last video, or like in the one that we filmed on my channel. Not bored of YouTube. We both still like YouTube. It's just editing. I fear kicks in a lot. Right. I wouldn't say it's false, but like, it's not not true. <laughs> There's some truth to the statement, but there is a lot of not truth to the statement. Like, maybe burnt out is a better way of saying it. It's not like it's boring, because it's very much like, it requires a lot of energy. Maybe tired would be a better answer. I don't have time for YouTube. I mean, <laughs> school recently. I definitely wouldn't say that I don't have time for YouTube. It's just more mental health had been bad for a while, so I couldn't mentally handle doing YouTube. Is it something you definitely have to be in like the right mental space for in terms of like filming and stuff? Like, I wasn't even getting up and getting ready to like for myself. I couldn't get ready for a video. Best duo in the world. I think that one's true. A thousand percent true. Thank you so much. <laughs> Emily left that one specifically, and then she also said that she missed us, and I just wanted to say that we're the best trio, Emily, when you're here. True. Miss you, Emily. We no. miss you more. <laughs> we love you. Lots of love. Lots of love. We're still trying to group shift. Very false. Could it be it's falser? Been, it's been like a year. We haven't even talked about that DR again. People ask me about it all the time on my live streams. They're like, have you gone back to your Twilight DR? And I'm like, I only went there to like go with Enzo and I'm not gonna do it without Enzo. Why did I completely forget about that? Like, now that you just mentioned that, I'm like, wait, we did try to group shift. That was like the whole point of the video on your channel. Uh, which is completely gone from my memory. No, that stuff happens to me all the time. Like, I'll just be thinking about something and then i'll be like wait how did i forget this whole thing that happened we're not trying to group shift anymore whenever i like see you look down at the book i always i'm just like <laughs> starting to panic i'm you like see me look down for the next right. assumption and you're like <sighs> someone said that they think i have a cheese obsession and you have a toast obsession avocado toast yes, yes. I remember that because you you love avocado toast. I wouldn't necessarily say I have a cheese obsession though. I actually specifically hate Swiss cheese. <gasps> Me too. Swiss cheese is disgusting it's, and should be banned from this earth. It's so foul. I don't know how people can eat it. Right, like whenever I see it on like a menu somewhere, I'm like, so I'm gonna have that without Swiss cheese. Yeah, literally I'll order things and I'll be like, okay, wait, can you substitute the Swiss for Pepper Jack or Cheddar? Pepper Jack, definitely my favorite. <laughs> I love Cheddar and like the fresh mozzarella is so good. But Swiss, disgusting, needs to not exist. So these two were from the same person, but they were separate things. And I think they're really oh. accurate and they kind of 
hurted my feelings a bit, but it was accurate for mine. It says that you try extra hard to be really nice to everyone. I don't know if this is meant as a compliment, but like, why am I kind of taking it as one? Whenever I feel like I do have, like, whenever I'm, like, vlogging with friends and stuff, I look at me and I always seem, like, super tense. Like, I feel like somebody else is talking and I'm just, like, waiting for them to stop talking and I'm like, what are you, like, what are you, like, are you, like, rushing? Do you have to be somewhere? Like, I seem super, like, I don't know. So if somebody would perceive me as, like, trying to be nice, okay, trying too hard, no, I don't think so. I think of it as like a compliment because I do think that you try your best to be nice to everyone, but not in like the way of like, oh, he's secretly me really mean. Like they're just trying to fake being nice. I think it's more so of like, you're like, I hope this person knows that I have the best intention for them and I want to be kind to this person so that they know that I don't want to hurt them. Right, and sometimes I feel like I let some stuff slide that shouldn't. I feel like I sometimes give people the benefit of the doubt when they I should stand my ground. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was Monique means well, but ends up doing crappy things all the time, which hurt my feelings. Very accurate. Really? I mean, I mean, like, especially as of like recently, there have been like people that I don't want to hurt at all. And then I do hurt them. And then I'm like, that wasn't my intention. And then they don't believe me because they're like, oh, you hurt me so bad. Like, how could that have not been your intention? And I'm like, it wasn't. I mean the best for everyone. I just can't do it for some reason all the time and i'll admit that like i can't maybe that's why i'm a slytherin is because i mean well but i just end up doing horrible things i've never met you in real life but i've never like encountered an experience like this with you ever i have the best intent I, it's only like a couple people but i still don't like doing it i don't like hurting people yeah no but i actually do relate to that like sometimes i think i do like try to have a good intention but i'm like it didn't come off that way. <laughs> Sorry. It's just like sometimes I'm like, oh, I have to make this decision because I have to make a choice for whatever reason. And then like I do something and sometimes it just ends up being like the wrong thing. And then it ends up hurting multiple people. And then I'm like, see, this is the this is what I was trying to avoid was hurting anyone. And now I've hurt everyone because I didn't want to hurt anyone. Right. Yeah, no, I get that. Enzo is the next Emma Chamberlain. I mean, I wouldn't say it's false. I'm just kidding. Um, I saw that and I like kind of agree with it because you've always given me Emma Chamberlain vibes. Like, low-key. That is like the best compliment I've ever gotten. I remember like- Someone said that about me too. They're like, she gives me Emma yes. Chamberlain vibes. And I was like, oh my God. Literally like, I, I've gotten a few comments like this before about like, oh, you give me like Emma Chamberlain or like Antonio Garza vibes. And I'm like, like, cause like my two like idols, like, thank you. You do, oh you gosh. give me both of those vibes like at the same time. It's, <sighs> it's really. That's like the best compliment ever. Thank you. And I'm telling you this as someone like who knows you too. Hey, <laughs> oh my gosh, thanks. I think it's just because they're both like really genuine people and they're genuine in their content and you're the same way. Right. You give off like the most like authentic vibes ever, like on screen and in real life. Or I guess like, I guess both would be on screen yeah. because like the only time I have seen you is on screen. But like off like, and on, like on and off camera. That's what I mean. Yes. Yes. I think we have really bad sleep schedules. Both of us? Yes. Summer 2021, we went to bed at like three or four every night. Now I think my parents are very much like go to bed. So that helps. Yeah, um, summer 2021, definitely would 100% agree with this statement because I was staying up all night and sleeping all day. Now, no. I woke up at 9.45 in the morning today. I'm doing great. I woke up at like 10.15. Monique is a fire sign and Enzo is an earth sign. Yes, <laughs> I am an earth sign. You give off earth earth sign vibes like as someone who knows a lot of stuff about signs i was actually like why did they think i was a fire sign and then my friend was like it's because you're aggressive and i was like i am not aggressive and then he was like see aggression i feel like people just associate like fire with like aggression but like is that even what a fire sign is well maybe it is fire I signs too much about i call them bad because they are and i feel like maybe that's why people think i give off that vibe because i am kind of a bad but I'm Period. actually an air sign, but my moon is a fire sign. I actually relate to my big three a lot. I am a Gemini sun, an Aries moon, and a Cancer rising, which by the way, a horrible mixture, but I relate to it. I think it sums me up as a person. Anyways, I'm a Virgo moon, Taurus sun, and Gemini rising. Your rising is my 
sun. Yes. I'm you actually do give me give off very much like Gemini vibes. But not in a bad way. I don't know why they're like there's such a stigma or like I it's understand such a stereotype. Damn the stigma though, because like with Gemini specifically, I really think it's like 50-50 flipping a coin because some Geminis, so cool, so chill, I love them. Other Geminis, I'm like, I can't stand you. Stay seven feet away from me at all times. No, I definitely do get that though, but like there's a stereotype against like, oh, uh, like you're a Gemini, like I don't know, I just vibe with Geminis. No, that's how I feel about like Tauruses because so many people like don't like Tauruses, but Taurus and Cancers are my two favorite signs because I just vibe so well with all of them. I honestly just love Geminis and Virgos, which are my rising, or not my rising, my sun and moon sign. I love Cancers. Cancer's my rising, which I think might be why I like them so much. I don't have any Taurus, so I don't know why I like Tauruses so much. You guys are burnt out from shifting videos. It's not even a secret. I stopped posting shifting videos. Yes, it's true. I'm definitely a little burnt out, but I still want to help people and I still want to be there for people's journeys. And that overpowers my burnt outness at this current moment. I feel like when you haven't shifted, there's like two videos you can make and it's trying out a new method or a shifting update. That's it. Yeah. And that's why I've done like 18 of those videos. And like the reacting to shifting stories videos, people keep commenting their stories and I'm like, thank you for sharing, but I'm not filming another one of those videos. This one. Someone said you two share a big secret that not many people know about, which... What are we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I think we're thinking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Which, obviously, mm -hmm. we're not gonna, like, say it. I'm just gonna say that yeah. assumption was scarily accurate, and I did not expect it. And it Can literally took out. me so off guard that I was like, is this real? By us saying it's true, it's not bad. Not it's bad. It's just personal. It's private. It's personal. Not Nothing bad. Nothing that anyone would ever even get canceled over. It's just... Yeah. Yeah. I'm like looking at the camera now and I'm like, sorry, like, I promise I'm not like lying to you. Just... It's like, so we do have a big secret. Anyways, Anyways next assumption. Next... <laughs> How do I even move on from that? Wanna be known for more than shifting. Yes, yes, that's true. Yes, shifting is great, but there's only so many kinds of videos that you can make with shifting. And there's only like so many people that you can reach out to and touch. And I still wanna reach out to you guys. I still wanna interact, wanna be there, but just maybe not right. always in the same way. Because I feel like shifting is like a topic and not a niche. Like you can't dedicate an entire brand to that. Someone figures out, let me know. Give me a call. I'll answer. <laughs> it feels more like a topic instead of like a niche, which I feel like the shifting community wants it to be a niche in a way, which yeah. is no hate to you guys. But it's just like, as a shifting creator, it's hard to make it into a niche. At least on YouTube. I on TikTok, it's a lot easier. I think it's the same way like a fandom, you know? Like, if somebody was, like, a huge fan of, I don't know, like, a singer, YouTuber, blah, 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 this, and you made, like, a YouTube, like, fan page, there's only so much you can post. Exactly. And I don't know why I just related that to shifting, but it just gives me the same energy. It is, because, like, if you're, if you're a fan page and you're, like, a multi-fan page, you can post about any fandom, about any YouTuber, about any TikToker, anyone. But if you are just, like, a Charlie D'Amelio fan page... You can only post Charlie D'Amelio content. I don't know why I had to use her, but probably okay. just because Charlie's nice. Then you're only going to be connecting to people who care about Charlie. You're only going to be talking to people who care about like those people around. So then if you like another creator, you're probably not really ever going to meet anyone who talks about that kind of stuff because you have a Charlie fan page. Exactly. Someone made an assumption that we are meeting up in real life. I wish this was true. But... I wish it was true too. It is very false though. I think that was just because of how the post looked on our Instagram. It did look very much like we were planning something, which I guess we kind of were, but it wasn't. It wasn't that. Something. I would love to eventually one day. I just don't think it would happen for a long while. I can just tell my whole family like, we're going to visit Monique. Yeah. You know? Like, you're still very young, and I'm still trying to figure out a lot of stuff in my own life to get straightened out before I go and just, yeah. let's have in-person collabs. I feel like we're just in two different places, but we still have a lot to, like, relate to and, like, talk about and stuff. Exactly. But one yeah. day, though. One day. We are both very socially awkward. Me, yes. I'm getting better, but I definitely am. Same here. 
And that's why, like, oh, literally the intro of my video, I was like, hi everyone. <laughs> I looked like I was being held at, like, gunpoint because I was just like, what do I say? The intro that I have, it used to be just like, I would just say random stuff and then someone was like, you should make it hi guys, gals, and non-binary pals to be inclusive. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's a just great so idea. so comforting. I was like, I want to be inclusive. That's the exact intro I want to give off. Something inclusive. So then I was like, boom, that's it. No, I love it. It's so comforting. We did technically go through all of the assumptions that I wrote down in the book, but there was oh. one assumption that I think should kind of be talked about, like a couple that I saw that were sprinkled in there, just about, you know, the S word, shifting, which we talked about on your channel, but I think that we should talk about it on my channel too, that way people can hear it from you twice. <laughs> Basically, people were just like, oh, Enzo, stop trying to shift. Monique, stop trying to shift. Stuff like that. And so stop trying to shift. At first I thought you were gonna say somebody assumed that like I shifted. I was like, <clears throat> anyway, no, I haven't tried to shift since like summer 2021. Um, don't really plan on doing it soon. Yeah. But um, if randomly I do and shift, like I'll tell you, so you don't have to be like, Enzo, did you shift? Did you shift? Which like, I don't wanna put any negative like energy into this air, but like I don't, think it's gonna happen because I don't intend on trying. We'll see. Who knows? I definitely haven't shifted in a while, as I said, in like my shifting slash life update. So if you didn't see that, you should definitely check it out. Um, I do plan on shifting again, but the last few times I attempted to shift, I did fail my attempts, which really makes me upset, especially as someone who has shifted and as someone who knows that people want me to shift so they can hear about it. Should we address the last assumption that we've seen about us not being friends? Yeah, that didn't come up in the Instagram questions. A lot of people think Enzo and I are not friends anymore. We aren't guys, it's true. But yeah, I'm just kidding. Bye. <laughs> we still talk a lot, not as often as I feel like we should. It's not like I completely forgot about you. Like we still catch up on each other's lives every like few yeah weeks or it doesn't matter if even we don't talk for like two months the second that we do talk after that two month period i'm going to talk to you the same as i did before that two month period started because right. like a period of not talking just because people drifted it shouldn't affect the relationship when the two people talk again we can just call each other even if it's been a while and we just talk right because it's like i think we're both aware that like we have two different lives and like we know that we just have to like live our lives for a second but we can always like come to each other to talk about it and like catch up and we still like are very aware and like familiar of a lot of the stuff that's going on in each other's lives but yeah that is all of the assumptions how do you feel we made it through i'm like kind of relieved like when you were like that's all i'm like i know i can breathe. see it just like <laughs> escape from your face you're like Thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely check out the video on their channel if you guys have not. And if you guys like this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you hated this video, leave a thumbs up so that I know that you watched it. And leave a comment Jeez. telling us what you hated about it or don't, because that might hurt my self-esteem. And any last words? Let us know what we should do in the future or just like... Spill your spill your heart out in the comments. I'm just kidding. If you want to do that on my channel, I don't know if Monique they can wants do it on my you channel to do too. that. I I'll okay. read them all. As always, happy birthday.